Noah Baumbach is a filmmaker I've admired nearly my whole film watching career, but I recently rewatched The Squid and the Whale for my podcast and it reminded me why I fell in love with Baumbach to begin with. It's no secret that nearly every Bombach film holds a little bit of him in it. In particular circumstances, he has a surrogate character that represents him in a particular place in his life. Three main examples of this are Walt in The Squid and the Whale, Danny in The Meyerwitz Stories and Charlie in Marriage Story. These three films form a sort of unofficial autobiographical trilogy and yeah, The Squid and the Whale are the very beginnings of this. It was Bombach's first real breakout movie. It put him on the map as both a writer and director, though he had co-written The Life Aquatic for Wes Anderson a year prior to this. It's a story about divorce and it's mostly told through the lens of children and it's so clever with how it shows us how parental and marital problems fester in minor ways, so subtle that children don't even really notice. Like, this film opens up with the family playing a game of tennis and Bernard, the father, is teamed up with his son Walt whilst his mother Joan is teamed up with their son Frank, which is incredible foreshadowing for what we'll discover later. Anyway, Bernard tells Walt to aim for his mother's backhand because it's weak, which he does to a brutal extent as he's egged on by his father. Joan becomes upset and leaves, only then does Bernard step in. Now, to the kids, this just seems like tennis. To Walt, this is just strategy, but in reality, it's a very spiteful thing to exploit your partner's weakness using your children to get a one-up over them, even in the smallest of ways like in a game of tennis. And then we move on to a dinner scene which sets up the final bits of foundations necessary to tell this story. The dinner scene puts on full display the philosophies and difference in mentality the parents have. So Walt asks his dad what he thinks about A Tale of Two Cities and Bernard's response is that it's fine, but a weak dickens. He later says, what is it about high school? You read all the worst books by good writers. And then Joan says that Walt should read the book for himself and make up his own opinion on it. But Walt responds by saying that he doesn't want to waste his time. Meanwhile, Frank contributes essentially nothing to the conversation except sticking food up his nose at the very beginning. And all of this perfectly sets up the dynamics and personalities of the characters. Joan is a free spirit, often criticised for leeching off of her husband's creative energy, but in reality, she's an independent thinker. She doesn't put much weight into other people's opinions. She thinks art exists to give everybody a unique experience, whereas Bernard, though supposedly the real writer and scholar of the family, is very narrow-minded. He thinks his opinion is fact. He's trying to mould his sons after himself. He's an egotist. Walt idolises his father, takes his opinion as gospel, doesn't care for free thinking because he just wants to appear smart without putting in the effort. And Frank is without an opinion on art. He's in his own world and completely content with it. Bombach is so incredibly economical with his writing, every single scene is efficient. So from the tennis match to the dinner scene, we are only three minutes into the movie and we know absolutely everything we need to know about these characters and what their conflicts are going to be. But the genius is that this isn't obvious, there is no big red sign explaining this is what's happening, it doesn't feel like exposition. It's subtle and builds the foundations of the entire movie, a classic example of showing and not telling. Now often in divorce, children pick sides. Parents often coerce or even bribe children into picking their sides. It's just the natural order of things. And this film attempts to show us how these things can happen. Now as a child of separation myself, I can tell you firsthand how uncomfortably real this is. Walt's character is such an interesting study here because he is Bombach's reflection of himself at this age, which is a completely honest and at times ugly confession. His personality is built on his father's opinions. He imitates him to the point of literally stealing lines of his dialogue and repeating them to other people. As is the case with his metamorphosis opinion. Though he hasn't read the book, he preaches to Sophie that she should read it and she ends up being a good parallel to his mother Joan. She ends up reading the book and asking Walt's opinions on it deeper and he has none because while well, he hasn't read it, Sophie is a free thinker much like Walt's mother and the irony is Walt grows to think he's better than her much like Bernard does with Joan. 
It's a scarily good example of how, when molded right, children can become mirrors of their parents. But whilst Walt is on this journey, Frank is on his own while trying to figure out who he is in the world, what he likes, where he stands. He ends up finding a lot of love for his mother's new boyfriend, Ivan, who Bernard proclaims a Philistine, which Frank also believes he is after learning what it means. This shows a clear philosophical divide between these two characters. Frank obviously taking after his mother as an independent thinker. He doesn't care about the arts and he's okay with that. Those things don't interest him much and he's comfortable with it. Ivan is the same and seems to live a much happier life. Bernard thinks there's something wrong with this lifestyle, again having a very narrow-minded view of the world. He even says at one point that Ivan is below their mother, because in his mind, people only have value if they value art. And not only if they value art, but value the right art, and the right art is what he considers good. It's an incredibly arrogant worldview that Walt is buying into because he's a teenager, his dad is still a superhero to him. But after he gets caught copying a Pink Floyd song for a talent show, Walt gets sent to counselling. He thinks it's okay he stole this song because in his mind, he believes he could have written it so it's a technicality that they did it first. But later on in this session, Walt is prompted to tell a happy and comfortable memory of his and he ends up telling a story about going to the museum with his mother. It's in this story in which he realises all of his errors. He listened to his dad, he gains an ego that leads him to believe he was better than the girl he was with, much like his father. He steals songs and gets in trouble, he spreads opinions that aren't his, all this in the pursuit of being his idol, but when he remembers this memory, he has this epiphany that his father isn't great at all, but his mother is. And he discovers himself and he becomes an individualist. Now, there's so much backstory to all of this and I've skimmed over most of the film because there is just so much to get into, it's so dense as a script. But just like looking at Jeff Daniels compared to Bombac's real father is uncanny. All of these people are based on real people, their professions, their opinions, their motivations and it's the closest to an autobiography one can get without explicitly doing so. But like I said at the top of this video, this isn't the only case where this has been the case. The Meyerowitz stories can be seen as a sort of spiritual sequel to this film. Danny struggles to find a good relationship with his dad who's an artist. He too is an artist in another way but doesn't feel good enough. Now this is nowhere near difficult to draw a parallel between Bombach and his real father who was a novelist. The Harold character in the Meyerowitz stories was actually based on Bombach's grandfather but I think the familial relationships still apply. But then more interestingly, looking at Marriage Stories Charlie as a grown up version of Walt is all too poetic. Seeing how Charlie handles his divorce as we know that he's also a direct reflection of Bombach himself makes so much sense given his childhood. And there's a moment in the argument scene in Marriage Story where Nicole compares Charlie to his father and it just makes him lose his mind. It steps the argument up to a whole other level. It elevates the entire situation because Charlie does not want to be associated, definitely not compared to his father. And we know that in the story of Marriage Story, we're told only that Charlie's father drank a lot and that's pretty much all that we know. But given the context of the squid and the whale, this adds so much perspective and context to why he would not want to be compared to his father because he wanted so bad to be this guy who is actually a loser and it's not hard to see where Jeff Daniels character would go from these movies. It's not difficult to understand that maybe he turned to alcoholism. And Charlie avoids all the traps that Bernard tripped over during his divorce. He tries to keep a good relationship with Nicole. He doesn't try to win his son over to his side and he's accepting of it all. He's an extremely humble character. I think matching these three movies as a trilogy or at least Squid and the Whale and Marriage Story as a duology adds so much perspective to both of them. One film being a film of divorce through the lens of children and the other through the lens of the divorcee and seeing how one event affects the other is very compelling and beautiful. Now realistically, I could comb through all of these movies and make an hour long deconstruction of these films and about how they link, but I think half of the fun is doing it for yourself and discovering the links for yourself. There is an endless amount of parallels between these characters. Between them and Bombach's real life also, if you're a fan of any of these movies already, I promise you watching these other ones and using this perspective will only make your love 
richer. And though I love all of these films, The Squid and the Whale is probably my favourite. It's a lot less refined than Bombax's later work would be. It's a little rough, a little raw, but this is the pure concentrated energy of Noah and it's incredibly poignant and gets its point across efficiently and sentimentally. I love this movie with all of my heart and I just wanted to talk about it a little for you guys. This isn't as well structured or thought out as my usual content is, but like The Squid and the Whale, it's made with a lot of love and sentiment. But this is all just me. Have you seen The Squid and the Whale? If so, let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of this video, what you think about the unofficial trilogy theory. I read every single comment and reply to as many as possible, and whether it's a masterpiece from Noah Baumbach or not, as always, keep watching movies.